patients who show up to the hospital who have a bleed that needs surgical intervention, let's say they have an intracranial bleed or they have a retroperitoneal bleed that's really either causing anemia or causing compression or obstruction of other vital organs, and they're on blood thinners, we'll need those blood thinners reversed. Now, a very common blood thinner for patients to be on is Coumadin or Warfarin, and this is what we call a vitamin K antagonist. So all the coagulation factors, which are 2, 7, 9, and 10 that rely on vitamin K to function properly, those are the factors that are no longer going to be working when patients are taking Warfarin. P and C and S, which actually help to regulate the coagulation cascade and work against some of the clotting factors, are also affected by vitamin K. So these two also get knocked out by Coumadin or Warfarin. Now, historically, for most of these patients, in order to reverse their coagulopathy, we would give these patients fresh frozen plasma, which is part of a blood transfusion where all of your coagulation factors are living. So by replacing all of these uh, coagulation factors with new coagulation products and by also giving vitamin K, well, that was our way of basically treating this vitamin K antagonist. However, further drug therapies have come out where we have been able to give you specific uh, clotting factors that are vitamin K one, so two, seven, nine, and 10, uh, that you can find in what we call four-factor prothrombin complex concentrate, otherwise known as K-Centra. And K-Centra has come out to basically shown that they can effectively reduce the INR quicker and sustain that reduced INR for much longer versus fresh frozen plasma. And INR is just uh, an acronym short for International Normalized Ratio, which is the coagulation laboratory test that we use to see how coagulopathic a person is while they're taking Coumadin. So the specific components of K-Centra are going to be those four factors, like I mentioned, factor 2, 7, 9, and 10. And you're also going to get protein C and S as well. It's also made with heparin. So anyone who has heparin-induced thrombocytopenia you're going to have you're not going to want to give this to those patients and it's also contraindicated in patients who have DIC or disseminated intravascular coagulopathy a couple of the biggest benefits besides the ones that I've already mentioned about quickly lowering and sustaining an INR for a prolonged period of time are that you reduce the effective volume that you're giving to a patient. So if you're worried that you have a patient with heart failure who's not going to tolerate large volumes of IV fluids, then k is going to have a significantly lower amount of IV fluids compared to plasma. And also you reduce any of the immunologic reactions that patients get from getting plasma transfusions, the most common being transfusion-related lung injury, otherwise known as trolley. The most serious side effects that you can get with giving k to someone are thromboembolic events, which are no surprise because you're basically reversing someone's coagulopathy. So you want to be on the lookout for strokes, PEs, and DVTs after you administer this medication. Lastly, you'll also want to give vitamin K to your patients after you give them this medication because as this uh, medication starts to wear off and levels start to decrease in the body, the vitamin K will keep those factors going that are going to be dependent on that supplementary vitamin K.